Why? I don't know. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the fourth episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 209th episode overall titled Shadow Rangers. To get in this episode of the Angel Grove Racing Technologies Garage, which I guess is Tommy's uncle's or whatever, Justin is helping Tommy with a car, getting a wrench for him. Tommy tells Justin to start up the car and give it some gas as a form of a child charity, and he gets in, starting the engine. This car is moving way too much for just being idle. Then the RPM starts to go nuts, and Tommy starts screaming for Justin to ease back, but Justin can't because his foot is stuck on the accelerator via his shoelace. This is the dumbest attempt at tension I've ever seen. Tommy has to help poor Justin, grabbing him and just ripping him out of the car, which I feel like shows that Justin really could have just gotten out of this on his own. Also, the car is like sparking and shit. Like, what is happening? Justin apologizes to Tommy, but he explains that it was his own fault because he should have made sure that the accelerator wasn't still sticking. It, uh, it wasn't. On the submarine, we are introduced to a new monster who's going to prom with Elgar, Chromite. By the way, that was a joke. Then, Divatox and Porto do this weird-ass thing where they're doing commentary on them walking by. Porto explains that they also have a refracto detonator, aka a bomb in a paint can. Divatox is stoked because now she's going to kill the Turbo Rangers. Allegedly. Justin and Tommy lament that the car is going to take a bit of work, and Tommy tells Justin to crank up some tunes, and Justin gets stoked to play his new CD. He goes over and the CD is gone. It's missing, apparently. Justin says that his basketball is missing, and so are Tommy's sunglasses. I feel like they're selling this like it's a setup from Divatox for some reason, even though we know it's not at all. I mean, this is just getting real awkward and clunky, guys. Porto and Crow might land on Earth by a bunch of paint and stuff at the building. That's convenient. Porto explains to Chromite that in order to blow up the Rangers, he needs to take the Liz off the paint can. The detonator is hinging on reactive paint that drips out of the paint can, and after it makes a rainbow of colors, it'll explode. Um, quick question, excuse me. Um, what the fuck? We then see Adam and Tanya walking around and they meet up with Kat, but then they're faced with Chromite, who does this sick move to go around hitting Adam down. He then just charges forward and Kat does nothing to stop him from punching her in the stomach. <laughs> Way to go, Kat! Then Tanya gets hit down and the three decide it's time to shift in the turbo. They do it and as they're morphing, Chromite hits them with a ray, creating gray helmeted versions of them behind them, and they stand up, punching them down. They are the Shadow Rangers, and Chromite explains that he actually stole their Morphin energy to create them. The Unmorphed Rangers have a really cool fight against their Morphed forms, and I'm loving this fight so much. Adam is clearly the best fighter, and I just want to watch him fight all the time. Tanya takes the time out of his fight to explain that they definitely have the turbo powers. No shit, Tanya. The Shadow Rangers get the Rangers, and they teleport away to the Chromite Cave. Justin has an idea of how to catch their thief. He made a homing device out of an old radio, and they'll put it on something to track their thief. Then Alpha rings them, sounding as stupid as I forgot he is now, and he tells them they need to get to where the others are. Justin and Tommy show up, and stupid Justin rushes forward, and then he morphs because Chromite is there. Then he gets hit with the ray, creating a blue Shadow Ranger. Then it's Justin and Tommy versus the Shadow Rangers, and honestly, how is Justin doing so well considering that the other three couldn't do anything? Then they get Justin grabbing him, and Chromite tells him to take away the little one, and then they just leave Tommy. Why? Just kidnapped him too. I mean, you don't need his shadow form to win, dude. Tommy teleports out to the power chamber and he comes into a lot of Alpha screaming at him about how much he sucks. Tommy asks Demetria for some advice and she asks if he really believes that there could be exact copies of the Power Rangers. And Tommy just gets pissed out of nowhere, demanding that Demetria just tell him what to do like Zordon. And he doesn't have time for her questioning bullshit. Alpha calms him down a bit by speaking to the audience directly. Get with the program. Suck it up, kids, because yeah, this is terrible, but you're just gonna have to deal. Also, she only asks questions because she's a terrible mentor and a terrible character. Tommy tries to figure out what they could be if they're not actually the Rangers, and we immediately see that Chromite is in his cave with the Shadow Rangers, calling them Shadows. Because they're Shadows. Shadow. Justin's little dumbass then just zaps himself, and Adam has to play Guardian, taking him away from the things that could hurt him. No one leave this kid alone with a fork and a power outlet, because he's going to die pretty quickly. Tanya tries to call Alpha, but nope, their communicators aren't working. Kat watches and she hears about the bomb that's going to go off and Chromite says that they need to go get Tommy, so Pink will stay back. Kat then speaks for the episode itself, saying, This is not good. Tommy does a particle analysis with Alpha and he finds out the Shadow Rangers are made of refracted light. Demetria asks what destroys light and Tommy says, Oh, it's so simple. Dude, that's actually a pretty heavy question. You definitely have no idea what destroys light. Back in the cave, the other Rangers lament that they have no idea how to get to Tommy and Justin says, 
or get Tommy to us, and he turns on his homing device. Tommy then shows up in the garage, finding the other part of the homing device, and he's taking it with him to find the others, but outside, he's met with the Chromite and the Shadow Rangers. Chromite sticks them on Tommy, and Tommy is doing decently against them, because of course, he's the strongest, and Chromite keeps trying to get him to morph so that his powers can get stolen too. I will admit though, this fight's pretty interactive. They get Tommy cornered and they tell him it's time to join them in the cave, which sounds like a cult. And Tommy looks up and sees a tree and he tosses Evil Blue into a shadow and it kills him. <sighs> their shadow, I don't know, forget it, it's not worth it. I mean, if they're shadows and they go into shadows, like, he gets rid of Green in the shadow too before he makes Yellow come after him and she disappears in midair. Wait, how is Pink alive in the cave then? Oh my god. Chromite then bails because he doesn't want to deal with Tommy, so Tommy decides this is the best time to morph. Shift into Turbo. Tommy's walking around and he finds the cave entrance going in. Meanwhile, yeah, there's just a puddle of radioactive paint that no one's noticing. Tommy shows up in the cave, taking on the Pink Ranger, and Justin blows his cover by screaming, It's Tommy! This kid is a freaking liability. Tommy gets rid of the light crystal in the room, and he kills Pink. Then Justin says, cool, the bars are gone, because God forbid anything in this episode is decent. Tommy then explains that the literal boy genius that the opposite of light is dark, so he just made the Shadow Rangers go into the dark to get rid of their light. Again, then why are they called the Shadow Rangers? They should be the Light Rangers. He also explains about the homing device. They say they have to find the bomb, but they're not sure how. Then they find Chromite's footprints on the ground, which are way too tiny for that dude. According to Justin, Tommy's helmet produces a special light that shows the footprints apparently. Man, this episode. Shifting the turbo for the rest. They show up at the place where they first found Chromite and they're looking for him. Then explosions go off and people run away as the Rangers take him on. Also, that paint can is still dripping, but now the paint is just blue. You know, to chroma key it, but I guess they forgot. The rangers are bouncing all over the goddamn scaffolding as explosions go off and getting hit down. They can't touch Chromite, so they try to figure out how to put him in the shade. Tommy then says they just need the Turbo Zords? Uh, Zordon's been gone for like a day and they're already breaking his rules about escalating a fight. They call out the Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord to then just stand in front of Chromite. Seriously. They just block out the sun in front of Chromite and the detonator and that does it. Man, this was lame. On the subcraft, Divatox tells Piranatrons that the elevator is full, and she complains to everyone else about how this plan sucked. Then Elgar burps. Yep. At the youth center, Justin and Tommy are tracking a CD player to figure out where it went via the homing device. There's a sign there that says that it's under new management, and of course, Boy Genius once again doesn't know what a simple phrase means, but sure, he's smart enough for high school. Inside, they grab Cat along the way before they walk out back, and they see Monkey, Bulk, and Skull are the ones that stole all this stuff. I feel like this plot could have definitely been an entirely different episode. Justin sees his basketball and the monkeys are wearing Tommy's sunglasses. Everyone's stuff is there. Kat says they should ask Ernie what the monkeys are even doing here. And Tommy says that the place is actually under new management. And dun dun dun! We meet the new manager, Stone. He is now the new owner of Ernie's juice bar. Why? Because Ernie's foreign service unit recalled him and he had to suddenly leave. Something about building a bridge in the Amazon. What?! We all know Ernie was not about physical labor, like come on. Then the monkey tosses a basketball getting a pizza on Jerome's face. Of course, he feels like he knows those two monkeys somehow. Speaking of which, is no one curious about where Bulk and Skull went? The end. I have no idea how to feel about this episode. I mean, it's pretty terrible. I mean, it, it makes zero sense throughout. It's one of the weakest episodes of Power Rangers probably ever. I mean, the acting's pretty bad. Justin is made out to be even more terrible. The monkeys make no sense. Now Ernie is just gone for the sake of being gone. However, I like this episode only because I used to have it taped on a VHS a long time ago, and I'd watch it a lot, so I don't know. I don't think that even that could save this episode from being absolutely terrible. I mean, they got out the Megazord to make a shadow, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of insane. I think the writers are going balls to the wall about wanting everything to be freshened up on the show, but they so overcorrected. Now they need to dial back the new stuff to make it good again. At least we're getting a kind of entertaining version of a bad thing. So how will next episode fare? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.